All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, a new edition of Pod by the Bay. I'm your host, Nathan Bond. Join alongside me, Seth Varnador, uh, Robert Steeg, feeling under the weather this week, so we gave him the night off. Um, quickly, Seth, let's recap this Miami catastrophe and then quickly move on to Tulane. Uh, USF did their best through the first half. Um, and I'm sure if you listen to any podcast between 2020 and 2022, we probably said that <laughs> often. Well, this wasn't close enough to be able to do the you know, if this play goes differently, if that play goes differently, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite that close, but yeah, yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't, you know, Steiner math it into a win. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, number eight Miami comes to Tampa and just kind of imposes their will in the second half into of a blowout 50 to 15 uh the bulls look competent in the first half and then in the second half things absolutely fell apart uh it, it was 15 14 at one point uh for the bulls with uh just a little under two minutes left cam ward uh, hits a, a deep shot and it's like 72 yard touchdown flips the game usf misses a field goal um, to cut into that lead at the end of the first half. And that was basically – that was curtains for this game uh, for the Bulls, unfortunately. Um, we said coming into the game, Cam Ward is the – was, is the best quarterback USF will play. And it yeah. bore out in spades. The dude just dotted this team up. Um, 24-34, 404 yards, three touchdowns. And maybe one of the flukiest uh, interceptions uh, you'll ever see. The receiver got wide open, was going to house it, and for some reason, like, just like tossed the baby to Brett Austin. Um, so it, just a weird thing. USF was able to capitalize on it, um, on that turnover. So, bully for them. Unfortunately, the Very PAT cool. got blocked. Uh, but, um, what you saw against Alabama was no trick plays, and USF's only touchdown of the night was on trick play because, well, I think this is maybe the coaching staff's uh, acknowledgement that eh, Miami way better than Alabama this year. Look at the day. difference in tone, I think, from Golish after both games. Like, against Alabama, I think he felt like he let one get away. Against Miami, he's like, eh, <laughs> 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 the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like he was that, not, yeah. I mean, it could have been you know the final score and, and kind of how quickly it just but it certainly seemed like it was more of a you know and for on the inter, the flukiness of the interception the flip side of that is probably should have picked six the first pass of the game so we can say it evened out <laughs> uh but, right yeah no war award was unbelievable um you know, I made a joke like it right before half that like, all right, you're gonna go, you're you're gonna go down one score unless Cam Ward like does a 360 and shoots the ball out of his butt 90 yards <laughs> for a touchdown pass. And, and there wasn't like a non-zero chance of that happening either. So <laughs> the way it felt, he was he was awesome. Um, and like I think they're trying to get him the Heisman Trophy, so they kind of poured it on a little bit. Uh, but yeah, man, like this, this is why last week, I know we sounded really negative last week, but it was more like they've got a bunch of like the three. Remember, I, I think last week I said they got three really good receivers. I wasn't even talking about the guy that went for like 200, you know, the, the Horton guy. I, yeah. I didn't even, he wasn't didn't even on my him. radar. And no. he went off for a ton of yards in this game. Uh, ton of eight yeah. Eight catches, 108 yards, one touchdown. He wasn't the one of the three I was talking about. You know, so like they're really, really good. Um, and they've spent a lot of money on both lines of scrimmage. And like even so they don't let a lot of pressure on Ward, who like when he doesn't get pressured is really good. And when they do, he knows exactly where to go with the ball, exactly his escape route. I think you said it like exactly where the escape valve is on every ever or the escape patch is on every single one. It's a really, really good team. I think they're better than Alabama. Uh, but that would be a good game. Uh, but I think Golish kind of hinted after the game that we may get to see that play out. <laughs> yeah, I believe both he thinks both of them are going to make the playoffs, so yeah. we may see that uh, in the future. But yeah, man, they're really good and they played well. Like you, you kind of 
we said the rest of this, it was the same recipe to be Alabama turnovers, explosive plays on offense. You got the turnovers, didn't really get enough of the explosive plays on offense. And Al, uh, Miami was able to eventually just kind of wear you down. And, and it's like a boa constrictor, just eventually the grip is too yeah. tight and it's over. Yep. Uh, you get the one uh, turnover. Um, and I kind of mentioned my my pregame point, USF 7-1 and one when they forced two or more turno- turnovers. They only got the one pretty fluky uh, turnover, if we're going to be com- totally and completely honest. Um, couldn't generate uh, enough pressure, uh, get hands on. But, like, it, that, that was just a complete team. Um, and we made jokes uh, on, on Twitter, at, you know, just kind of making fun of Cam Ward. But, like, that there's a reason he's gone up at every single level level of college football. Like the dude is phenomenal. He's a Sunday player to me. Um, he, yes, he, 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 he'll rise up the board. His biggest issue has been, and this is like so. Co- also covering Florida, you know, I watched a lot of Ward in the off season, just getting ready for that first game. And you know, the question, the big question I had with him when we did our preview over there was, you know. He turns the ball over a lot. For his career, he was actually a negative EPA player. Like he was not an, he did not, was not at it. But my question was, was that a surrounding cast issue? You know, where you're trying to do too much because your supporting cast isn't great. Uh, through four games, it certainly seems like that was more the issue than him being really reckless. Now, he does have that playground style, and you saw it a, a few times where he's going to get outside and he'll make a throw late and find somebody. Um, so he is kind of the backyard kind of style football guy where he's going to take some risks, but so far it has not burned him too much. And he's, it's been just really like the, his knee ended up being down, but the one you get him third and long. Oh my God. It's like, he just flips the ball out to, it's like, he didn't even look out. He just flips the ball out to nobody. And then all of a sudden there's a running back catching it, taking it for a first down. It was like, Holy cow. Uh, so I think you have to give them a lot of credit in the game. Uh, I thought USF played really well, and somebody posted like the perfect GIF in our Discord. It was Star Trek. It was the it was taught, somebody said this Todd Orlando. It was I'm giving them all. I'm giving them all she's got. <laughs> yeah. There was nothing. Like, there was not yeah. much to do in that game. So yeah, it, it really outside of the the busted coverage uh, that we talked about. Uh, depending on how you listen to this, we talk about it, or we already did talk about it yeah. on the Ponderosa uh, edition. The busted coverage on the cover two at the end of the uh, first half, um, and then obviously the ninety-one yarder, which turned out to be the longest run in program history for Miami, which is interesting. Um, the defense was mostly in position. For most of the night, it's just Cam Ward put the ball like great defense, but you can't really defend the perfect throw. And he had like the perfect throw the majority of the night. Um, and-, and that's kind of what Golish said after the game. He's like, you know, you watch it, it's like you're in position, but the ball is like right where you can't make a play on it. And they did that quite a few times. Like poor Rucker was, you know. In position a lot, in tight <laughs> coverage a lot, but they just kept making catches and catches. So he had a rough night, but like really his coverage was pretty good. He's in phase. He's right there. It's just the ball is thrown, you know, pretty close to perfectly for a lot of those. So yeah. um, that's you kind of got to tip your cap and hope that you don't play anybody that good <laughs> at quarterback again, which I don't think you will. So no, um, I mean, if Navy can do that to Seth Pennigan, I think we've got a decent <laughs> fighting chance. I, I like your two hardest games are out of the way. The next two are obviously the most important. Um, because I mean, you, you cash those checks for Alabama and Miami, uh, revenue, uh, there, but for your season, th- these next two games at Tulane, who's two and two. ESPNU, another, you know, cable game, which is good. Not at 7 o'clock, uh, but at noon, um, 11 Central. Uh, so, again, USF fans kind of get screwed on the early early game uh, when they travel to New Orleans. I think uh, that happened again. That happened in 2022. Um, 
So, but it just means that you frees up your Saturday night to either, uh, you know, drink and celebrate or to wash it all away and pretend it never happened. Um, so you've got that going for you and, and you're in new Orleans. So why not? Yeah. Before it gets too far, my kids would be very upset with me. I want, I, I, I got to give a shout out to Mr. Durrance, Mr. D is the principal at their school and he listens to all our shows. I told him I'd give him a shout out. He's the man. He does a great job over there. But my kids oh, man. want to make sure Mr. <laughs> D got the shout out. I forgot last week. I was supposed to last week. I didn't write it down. And then as soon as we got off, I was like, oh, I forgot. But Mr. D, good luck with the hurricane here the next couple of days, getting everything figured yeah. out. Yeah. But thank you for being a listener. So, so are, are you are you guys um are your kids out of school the next couple of days or yeah, next two and then Friday they're not sure on yet because some of the schools are being used as shelters, shelters. So kind of be what the fallout is. But yeah, next two days, everybody's off and out. So mm. and I'd already taken the week off work, so I'm home. So oh look at that. Yeah. Good timing or bad timing depends on, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> depends on, depends on what you want. Hope really, you're really get done during the week. Really, oh, yeah. yeah, really thought you were gonna be able to play some golf this week. Well uh <laughs> And you're out of work, and then this happens. So of course it does. But um, shout out to Mr. D. Thank you for listening. Absolutely, we love our teachers. Um, let's let's move forward. Let's push ahead. This Tulane team, they're two and two. Uh, they beat ULL. Uh, I believe it was forty-one thirty-three last week. Um, they played tough and hung around with Kansas State. And Oklahoma, uh, the previous two weeks, um, both losses. It's clear USF played the better ranked teams, um, but I still think this Tulane team is, is very dangerous. It's it's why they're still the favorite to win this conference. Um, they found a, a freshman quarterback in, in Darian Mensa that can kind of do what they need to do offensively. Uh, we go exclusively, ex- extensively into the advanced stats uh, in the Ponderosa, um, but Seth, they don't throw the ball often. But when they do, they they can pop you pretty good. Yeah, they're one of the. I think they're the top ten percent in the country in passing explosiveness. So um, they're throwing it like, according to our friends at Game on Paper, they're throwing it like twenty six times of the game uh, times a game, which is. 112th in terms of like passing attempts, so not a ton, but when they do throw it, they're generating explosive, which is why their passing game is really highly rated and stuff like EPA and things like that. Um, they've got some receivers that can go get it, they use their tight ends pretty well, too. Uh, and then I think you know, being able to run the ball and having a quarterback that can also run can give you some heavier boxes and let you get behind people with play action and things like that. So uh, I think they have a pretty good scheme that puts all that together. Uh, but, you know, the other side of it is they're allowing pressure on 40% of dropbacks, which we talked about USF kind of letting a ton of pressure. USF's actually let less up this year. It's still high. It's like 39%. But <laughs> but Tulane's let it more pressure. So, and we feel like USF maybe has played two of the top probably two, definitely two of the top 10 defensive lines, defensive fronts in the country. So with how Todd Orlando and the USF defense like to bring pressure from a bunch of different places, can you get to the young quarterback and affect him and make it uh, a little bit tougher? You know, I thought there was like one or two times where they actually tricked Cam Ward and almost got him to throw some bad, and then he's just like, and I'm just going to roll up. I'm just going to yeah. run away from this. And, and But he almost took the bait a couple of times. So a younger guy. Maybe you can pressure him and get him to take the bait and, and turn the ball over, and that's kind of right. A couple turnovers is it goes a long way towards winning in the Alex yeah. Polish era. So, absolutely, uh, six touchdowns, two uh, interceptions, a couple of fumbles, a, a pretty costly one against Kansas State for Mensa. Um, it, again, young guy against a, a, a blitz, blitz package that some have called one of the most exotic. Uh, with packages um, that a team will ever face. Um, My son being the goat, Nick Saban. Correct. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see kind of what Tar Orlando does to combat that. Um, quick kind of injury aside, um, J. 
Jalen Shuler practicing again. Uh, goal is set on Tuesday. Uh, working his way back seems to, he's close. May not be ready, but uh, it doesn't make was sense. It, was it a little wordplay? Because see, if you listen, he goes, Byron Brown practice took every rep. Jalen Shuler, he was at practice today. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. He said he was at practice. He looks like he's almost there. Yeah, so do you I think don't. He actually plays. No, I don't. And it, it like, you've got a bye week next week. Like, you lose this game, it's not the end of the world. If you lose um, Schuler for the year, it's pretty tough. It's pretty. It's pretty tough. Like, and Petway's done a great job. Um, but I think Shula we can just see his. We can yeah, we can see some of Petway's shortcomings, just not as good in coverage and in space. He's like a human missile. I mean, but, when they motioned out the the running back <laughs> and it was Petway on an island, I think I turned to you and was like, "Oh God, this is not good." <laughs> and they went to it, and Cam was just a little off. Yeah, maybe his otherwise. only missing so tonight, like, but like it was going to be a freaking house call. Um, did not. Yeah. Look he, that. He's just – he's a great in-the-box linebacker, I think, when he's got to get out in space, and and that's kind of the role he's playing. Um, he had some more trouble with it. Like, a lot of times he's got to track the back out of the backfield, and that's where Miami was able to kind of slip a guy out and check down to him and pick up a play because he slipped out kind of the opposite way. Um, so, you know, that's where you – like a guy like Schuler can really kind of – he was doing pretty good there. I mean – he got hurt on an interception on a really great rep of, you know, pass defense. So hitting him back would be helpful. Uh, but, you know, Petway, I think might it might be a good game for him in terms of a team that likes to run the football. He can play in the box and, and really yeah. kind of uh, – that's kind of his game. He, yeah. He's really great in there. He can muck it up. You know, I heard Cole Kublik talking about him and, like, Alabama center. He's like, it was like a wrestling match watching those two go over and go at it over and over again. And he was really complimentary of him a couple weeks ago when they played Alabama. So, yeah, I, I think this is a better game for him. But yeah, if you when you, you get Schuler back, he can kind of give you a little bit of everything, which is what you need. Yep. Uh, speaking of uh, kind of a team that likes to run the ball, uh, Makai Hughes is a phenomenal running back, um, 1,300 yards last season, um, pacing, pacing Tulane uh, this year already. That's the guy that USF needs to stop to kind of stop the offense. Um, like we've said, they don't throw the ball a lot, but it's it, they're the team. This is kind of a John, John Summerall kind of team. Run the ball, hit a couple deep shots, play good defense. Um, it, it's the it's what made him so effective at Troy. Uh, it's why he got the job, and you stop him. It, it's going to go a long way into stopping. Uh, this offense going forward, he's the the lead back. He is the bell cow. He, the other another running back um, only has twenty carries on the season, and then you've got uh, two wide receivers in Mario Williams, who is the transfer from he played at Oklahoma, played at USC. He paces uh, this team, uh, eighteen catches, three hundred twelve yards. Over 17 yards a catch, and then uh, Dante Fleming nine catches, 164 for 18. Uh, those are the, the two explosive guys. Um, yeah, looking at the the rushing numbers real quick. Uh, Hughes 77 carries, 424 yards, averaging five and a half a carry. Um, the next guy is uh, Arnold Barnes, Arnie Barnes, 20 carries, 63 yards, and then Mensa Ty Thompson who was mentioned by J.P. Uh, Gooderham in the Ponderosa is kind of a player to watch. Very good short yardage um, quarterback who can still kind of throw the ball. So we'll, we'll see how, how that works out. A um, couple tight ends to be uh, aware of just for USF fans, uh, Alex Bowman, uh, Bauman, and then uh, Reggie Brown. Uh, they have combined for eight catches and five touchdowns this season. Uh, two lanes thrown seven. Only one has gone to wide receiver. One went to uh, Hughes, and then the other uh, five went to the tight end. So uh, they don't get a lot of 
touches uh, so far, but they make them count. So there's a couple of names to watch. Uh, I think some 12 personnel is going to be in USF defense's future. Yeah, and that's kind of like if you're – like that's where you can live with a guy like Petway. 12 personnel, game played in the box. I think he can be really, really good in that type of game. So don't need to rush a guy like Schuler back. He would probably – be more useful just schematically against, you know, a team say like Memphis who likes to throw it around a little bit. Mm-hmm. So uh, no, I don't think you're in too much of a hurry to get him back. So no, absolutely not. Um, I, I mean, there's not much else to say about this game. It's, it's the next game. It's important. You've got to split one of these two to kind of maintain conference title hopes this season um this is the less likely of the two for usf to win um especially after what we saw navy do to memphis last week um so be mindful we go i'm gonna implore you guys spend the money per month uh, 10 bucks, you get a film room, an extra podcast. We go extensive into what the issues are with this offensive line. Uh, in this week's Ponderosa episode, it is a concern. Um, I, I do mention in the Ponderosa that USF gave up 10 sacks against Miami. That was me going off of what Alex Golish said in his press conference on Tuesday. Um, it was four sacks, seven tackles for loss, kind of combining. Yeah, I think he was saying 10 negatives. So, but it sounded like I had to rewind it. Like I told you, I had to rewind it a couple of times. I thought he said 10 sacks. Well, I was like, holy crap. I mean, no, I didn't think he was he wrong. Uh, he, yeah, it's, it's, it's I was sure. like, that seems like a lot, but it's feasible. And it I was like, oh, I'll seemed, go look it up. It seemed right. Yeah. Um, so, definitely something to be uh, mindful of. There are some issues that have not fixed itself over the last year, regardless of the amount of play some players have played. Yes, no, no. There's, and the issues, just to, without giving the numbers out, tackles seem to be doing okay. Issues are up the middle, and it's tough, you know. And you know, another another thing we do in the in the Patreon is the film room, and when we go through the film room and, and show, oh well, Byron didn't have a great game throwing the ball. There was a ton of just like the f- middle of the line is getting pushed into Byron's lap. And it is hard to make throws when the pressure is coming there. You'd rather have it on the edges so I can step up into a nice firm pocket and deliver the ball. Pressure up the middle is really hard to deal with. Um, on one of passing game. one of Sean Atkinson's best catches on Saturday night, I, Byram was lucky he didn't hit his hand on a helmet uh, uh, of one of his offensive linemen. He was like his throwing motion got tweak because there was so much pressure in his face and his throwing but he didn't get to complete the throwing motion Sean made a great catch it was a big it was a chunk play early on in the game but that's kind of the pattern you're seeing uh with this offense and this offensive line um kind of mentioned it in the press box um you one guy goes out and you're switching through positions yeah I don't and- love that and that was your concern in the preseason, all right? We talked about it, and it was kind of because you said, you know, uh, there was like multiple guys listed as backups that were starters and other players. It was kind of a weird yeah. – and it was, you know, my thing was, well, you know, it lets you get your best seven in the game somehow. But your contention was like if one guy gets hurt, then do you all – we're going to have to move around, and that's kind of what happened. Right. So, like – it's you're getting your best group on, but you're also having to move guys all over the place and just being like, all right, this guy's the backup here, put them in now. You no, know, you're playing your best six or whatever, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a big game of musical it, chairs. Yeah. It, it, and like, if we've learned anything from watching call it football, period, oh, through our lifetimes, continuity on the offensive line is paramount. At center, it's, like the biggest thing, like the, I mean, obviously the most prominent example is the Bucks basically won a Super Bowl because 
the Raiders center went AWOL the night before. Right? Like that, that's just basically what happened. You, John Gruden had all the play, whatever, but like the Raiders offensive line was not the same without Barrett Robbins. And that's it all starts up front. Like and he was not the same after going to Tijuana. No. So it like just be careful now. Where I'm not worried, but it's on the radar. I'm not worried because of Miami and Alabama. I was worried because of Southern Miss and Bethune also getting four sacks was interesting. Um, just something to be mindful of going forward against a, a team where John Summerall has hung his hat on defense um, for years. Uh, I think that'll be a really important part of this game because we talked about it on the Ponderosa, but John Summerall – uh, spent some time as, at Kentucky with Mark Stoops. One of the hallmarks of Mark Stoops' defense and why they're always pretty good is they don't really give up a ton of explosives. They keep a top on the defense. They make you kind of drive the ball down the field and not make mistakes. So negative plays, sacks, penalties, those type of things are what those teams thrive on. Uh, now, JP said in, in the Ponderosa that Tulane has not had some issues getting pressure at times. Um so if you're USF, that's great news. But if you do give up those pressures and give up some negative plays, that really plays into the hands of how they like to play because they're not going to be a great – like Miami, super aggressive, man coverage in your face. You were able to motion and get some stuff. I thought the game plan was really good, yep. by the way. Um, just kind of ran out of bullets after the first half a little bit. But that's not – I don't think that's how Tulane's going to play. They're going to sit back a little bit more, make you – earn it down the field. And um, if USF, if they can play like that and get pressure, that causes for a really long night. If USF can block them and then, you know, make some throws and catches, you make a guy miss. Now that's where you can generate some explosive with some run after the catch. But I don't think you're going to get a ton. You may get a couple, but not a ton of shots over the top. Even though I would be interested to see if, uh, I do think Tennessee may have shredded Kentucky in some roles last year there. <laughs> Let me look. I think I think it's very possible that happened. Yeah. Um, a, as we kind of wrap up this episode, we'll get into the picks uh, here as, Seth, you look that up real quick. Um, so, obviously, Stieg not here this week. He did send in his pick. Um, so, just recapping last week, um, Seth, you had under 65. It was a push, exactly 65. So three zero and one through four weeks, Stieg, unfortunately, was correct. You uh, he picked Miami minus sixteen and a half, as did I. Uh, so he's one and three. I'm four and zero oh going into this ever important conference opening game. Um, I believe USF is four and three in AAC openers. Um, so looking to stay above five hundred. Um, for the Bulls <clears throat> against Tulane, 12 o'clock ESPNU. Um, so Steve John, uh, oh, go ahead. John Summerall was the co defense coordinator at Kentucky in 2021. Uh, 2021, Tennessee beat Kentucky 45 to 42. Uh, had 461 yards of offense, 316 yards passing, uh, 145 yards rushing, and 9.8 yards of play. Pretty good. So, uh, yeah, no, Kentucky had 600 yards of offense. So <laughs> that's, well, I that think was, it's, I, I think the issue at Tennessee then, right? They didn't have this defense that they have this year. It was, no, they got it. They had to score points. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was a wild, it was a wild game there. So I, that's, so they have played. So does Golish have the secret sauce against this defense, or does seeing the, seeing this offense once before help Summerall make a better play in here? Uh, that was a team with uh, you know Hendon Hooker and a few other pretty good players. So yeah, uh, Cedric Tillman's and whatnot of the world. So they're pretty good. But yeah, uh, to the picks we go. The over under is sixty four and a half. The line is Tulane minus six and a half. 
Stieg not here. He's picking under 64 and a half uh, for the game total. I could see it happening. Um, I think two length defense is pretty good. Um, USF has struggled against competent teams under head coach Alice Golish. So this is a, a, a big, big test for the Bulls. Um, Seth, are you going with the, the line or the over under? The over under did burn you. It did. Last I week. mean, I was correct. Like, I, I mean, there's 95 yard run blue for me. So, like, <laughs> or like third and 10. So, uh, you know, I feel pretty good about where I, that's, I thought that USF would not score in the 20s. So that's kind of what uh, led me to say under. Now they scored more than I thought maybe. But uh, anyways, oh, I, I'm fine with the push. I thought it was lower. So during the game, I was like, oh, I lost it. But I'm going to take USF plus six and a half. I think, I think they can win. Um, you know, I think they have been tested. Health is a bit of a scare. Like how healthy are they? And then obviously it's a tough spot after a bit of a letdown, but it may be a spot where they just want to get out and get the taste out of their mouth. And they talk about they're excited to just be playing in the morning and, and just they can wake up, go and play. Uh, so I'm, I think USF can cover. I, I wouldn't be shocked if they won either, um, but I also have not watched a lot of Tulane. So this may be just my ignorance here. But just looking at some of the things, like I think USF can get pressure. Uh, and if they can do that, uh, that's kind of helps them on defense and offensively. If they can run the ball, that kind of helps set up their offense. So um, I think it's a game that you feel like you may have some, you know, it, it matches up. Their weaknesses may match up with your strengths a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if they won, but I'll take the six and a half points. Um, being going on the road after a tough home, a tough loss uh, is, a, is a weird spot. But give me the points. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm going two lane minus six and a half. Uh, reason being, this offense has not looked good. And uh, two lane's defense is good enough to cause some issues. Uh, the offensive line is a m- massive issue for me. Um, for, for the Bulls, USF, I mentioned it, has not beat like a team with a winning record under head coach Alex Golish. Uh, you know, I, I've said you're bad until you're not defensively. You can't beat a team, a, a good team, until you do. And it doesn't even technically count because two lanes, two and two. Uh, but they are the team. They are the team to beat in this conference. Beat a team you're not supposed to beat would be my what I would tell this this team. You haven't. You've played good enough for a half here and there against good teams, but you haven't done it for four quarters. I need to see it for four quarters. You mentioned the injury concerns. Golish said it, it, it basically like a car crash on Saturday night. Byram's banged up. Mike Lofton's banged up. It, it, you know, def- like This bye week could come at a better time, but you got to get through Tulane, and I am concerned uh, that USF, has the capability to do so. We'll see. Um, uh, I, I, what's the implied score? Like 35, 29, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, I could, it, I think uh, it's very possible that uh, they come out and don't look great, but I, I, I feel like they're going to play pretty well. And there's a decent matchup here. I don't, you know, I, I've not seen a lot of Mensa, so I'm interested to watch him play against this defense. Yep. Young guy, seeing like you said, like one of the most exotic pressure packages in the country from Todd Orlando. I'm sure he's going to dial him up. Uh, and if you can generate some turnovers, that goes a long way towards getting that victory. So, yes, it does. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you tell your friends, tell your principals at your kids' schools. I Mr. mean, D. Uh, we're, we're we're taking over, all right. We got on a USF graphic this week. Like, I mean, come on, <laughs> how big uh, is that? It, it, I mean, shoot, we were told we were too professional for our rankings. So, I mean, here we are. Uh, tell your friends, join the Discord. Five bucks a month um, gets you inside information. Um, 
told you guys on Saturday at 5.30, hey, the deadline for the Pac-12 was Monday. And guess what happened on Monday? That deadline happened. Um, yeah, you had it a couple of days ahead uh, and gave you some some other things in that Discord. Uh, it's a great community. Um, please join. And then 10 bucks a month. Get you two extra pods. We get, f- uh, we get four extra pods a month and film rooms. Now film rooms extra. So you get like eight extra pieces of content a month. Uh, and plus the Discord access, which is like really valuable on game day. Because we'll put, that's where we put injury news. Like when we see, okay, Vanessa was down on the field. She's Jaden Schuler's not dressed out. He's in his street clothes. Bang, put it in the Discord. You guys knew very early that Jaden Schuler wasn't playing. Uh, so that kind of stuff is really valuable on game day. So if you're at ten dollars, you get that, and then you get all the extra content, uh, which is really good. It's like having <laughs> we give you so much information. It's like having the PFF subscription, which is ten bucks a month, yeah. and a message board subscription, which is ten bucks a month. Uh, you get all that for ten dollars a month, and the film room, which nobody else does, and and I think we cover it in a way nobody else does, and in a better way. So agreed. There you go. Well, thanks again for tuning in to another edition of Pod by the Bay. Be safe. Get your water. Get your gas. <laughs> Don't do anything stupid during a hurricane. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the path and you're in an evacuation zone, get out. Don't be a hero. I think. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a three. It's not going to be a little baby one. It's going to be pretty. Seems yeah. like it might be pretty strong. So all our pain handle people, stay safe. Stay, stay safe. dry. Don't be a hero. Get out if you have to. Um, And go Bulls. Go Bulls.